Welcome for us, those of us in the building, those online, those who will be joining us shortly <laughs> as they trickle in. We're a welcoming church. It's one of our hallmarks. Welcome to Dave and Josh this morning. We want everyone to feel welcomed here and we particularly acknowledge that and extend a welcome to our Indigenous friends and acknowledge that we gather uh, on the lands of which the Wurundjeri people were the first custodians. Remember, we're recording our service. You can watch it again and again and again. Uh, we encourage you to stay home if you're not feeling well and you are welcome to wear a mask. And we do a good morning tea. So please stay afterwards for that if you can. Right, I haven't prepared you at all for this. We're going to do our call to worship and lead straight into our songs of praise. So let's get you ready to go. I liked this call to worship. It talks about why we're here. It turns our focus to our God who is great and worthy or worth praising. It's worth saying something about. <clears throat> this is from Psalm 145. So we might stand, given that we're going to be singing straight away. I invite you to say the words in bold as we declare what it's all about. Come, let us praise God together. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's tell stories of God's power and majesty, his mighty acts through history. Let's remember the compassion he's shown towards us, his mercy and unfailing love, generation after generation. Let's pass these stories along to our children and grandchildren so that they too may come to know and love our God. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's worship God together. We hear our praises. Thanks, Rod. Right. 
I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see His love and mercy washing over all our sin. The people sing, the people sing. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I see a generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith with selfless faith I see a new revival stirring as we pray and seek we're on our knees we're on our knees Hosanna 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 in the highest Hosanna, Hosanna Hosanna in the highest Heal my heart and make it clean Open up my eyes to the things unseen Show me how to love like you Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We have gathered this morning to say we think you are pretty great and you're worth praising. And when you're worth us declaring that we want to know you more, we want to build your kingdom and be part of your church, and we want to worship you with our whole lives. Amen. You can have a seat for a quick minute, although, Rod, you might like to stay there. This morning, we are thinking a little bit about what it means to be a member of the church. What does that mean? Is that different to just coming along on a Sunday morning? Is it important? What's the basis of it? Paul's going to spend some time exploring that and, and answering some questions that he's received over the week about that. But I wanted us to read um, here from the book of Acts, which just gives a little glimpse into what the early church might have been like. Thanks, Nova. That's you, love. You got your reading there? Yep, come on up. From Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles formed, performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. That gives us a lovely glimpse into the 
community, the early church community. And it's easy these days in our very individualistic society to lose sight of the benefits of being together in something. It's something that we struggle with as worship leaders to, to make sure that our service includes some of the we as well as a lot of the I sort of thinking and praying and praising. As choosing songs, it's often hard to find a song that talks really nicely about the we. We're gathered together and we are building something beautiful together. Um, and I think we here make a real point of trying to find those songs. But I think it was, I was talking to Rod about the fact that we didn't have a lot of those songs. And as Roddy's want to do, the next week he came along with a song that he'd written himself about the we. We are the people of God. We've sung it a few times, but not for a while. So we're going to put it up. Maybe Rod and I will sing it the first verse and um, you can join in if you remember it. And if you can't remember it, we'll sing it twice so you can join in. And just look at all those we's and our and um, I can't think of any other um, plural pronouns, but I'm sure there's others in there. Uh, this thing talks about the things that we're doing together and building together. So why don't you stand? We'll have a go at it. this question to you this morning I'd like you first to have a chat about it just with a few people around you no actually for the first part no we will do this in, in small groups here yeah, just to people around you why do you come to church just have a little chat about why do you come to church go let's pause it there pause 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 Len Pause. <laughs> uh, those at home might like to put some responses in the chat function. 
But here's, here's, a, here's a twist on that question. Why do you come to this church? Go. Okay, I'm going to draw that in. That's enough. You can keep talking about these things over morning tea, perhaps. <clears throat> All right. Eyes to the front. Sue, do you want to come up? I'm trying to explore some of the things that we appreciate and value about this place, which is why I asked the second question as well as the first. So did you hear some common themes? Are there some words or phrases we could put up to gather our thinking together? Open-minded. Open family. 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 It's like a family. Yep. Community. Community. Welcoming. Welcoming. Compassion and love. And feeling at home. Diversity. Diversity. Good, outreach. Good outreach. Good outreach. Like what we're doing in the community. Good morning tea. Good morning tea. It's a, it's definitely belongs on the list. <laughs> in fact, we could extend that to say we like eating together in lots of ways. <laughs> Creative. Thanks, Kathy. Inclusive. Good teaching. Good teaching. Thanks, Sue. Prayerful leaders. Prayerful leaders. Local. It's local. Yeah. Why do we come here? It's the closest church for some of us, not for all of us. It is for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul lives next door for those who... I don't know. Yep. Explorers. Explorers is fun. The kids' time is great. You'd drive across town for that, wouldn't you, Jadari? <laughs> <laughs> that makes me want to want to stick around. Thanks, everyone. So we're exposed to different ideas and different ways of thinking, which can be stimulating and challenging and comforting sometimes. Participation in services. Participation. Yeah, you have to participate whether you like it or not here. And it's part of the weighing up of whether you're going to come back, I guess. <laughs> it is something we value, isn't it? We have shared values. We have shared values. So things like diversity and community are really important here and welcome. Yep. A good vision, I think I heard. Oh, we can get onto that, Jonathan. Yep, we have study groups. Mm -hmm. the music is integrated in the service, not like a standalone concert. We, we, well, Rod could give us a concert. The rest of the musicians couldn't give us a concert. But you accept our foibles, and that's that's nice. Great. So supportive of our efforts and perhaps even supportive of our people, of each other. Oh. Yeah. We embrace imperfection. We embrace imperfection. That's great. Thanks, Kat. Yeah. Shared, accountability. Shared accountability and evaluation. evaluation. That's great. I think we got just as much of my focus 
We value, we value relationship and we're not going to, um, yeah, we're going to put that first when it comes to exploring our differences. Mm. All right, we're going to need to stop there or we won't have anything time left for the rest of the service. That's, that's lovely. I find that very encouraging. Um, what we're going to do is send the kids out now. Thanks, Jonathan and Nova. And have you got a helper or do you need a helper? Your he nominated helper... Your nominated helper was unavailable. Thanks. Such enthusiasm. I want you all to come into church next week, running in going, yay! Like that, like I didn't see who it was, like someone just, Joshua did, yes. I want us to spend a little bit of time uh, now in a prayer exercise. And we had our panel on prayer last week. Um, and there was that question around, you know, where does prayer start and end? You know, am I, when, when does prayer, when am I just thinking and when am I praying? And I'm going to introduce an activity, a prayer activity, which is partly thinking and partly praying. And how you deal with that is entirely up to you and what you do in your heads, because I'm going to give you some things to think about, some things to think about and reflect on. And I invite you to do that, thinking that God is thinking about them and reflecting on them too. You might specifically turn some of those thoughts into more explicit prayers, like, thank you, Lord, for this or that or the other. But I think prayerful meditation, God is present in all of that. Um, we will be finishing in what is more explicitly a prayer, but I'm just giving some explanation for those of whom this sort of prayer exercise is not so familiar. A, a contemplative prayer, I guess, is what you would call it. It's something that I find very useful and you may or may not, but it picks up a lot of what we've been talking about today. And I'm going right back to our psalm that we used as our call to worship, which was Psalm 145. And there were aspects of it in our music, and now we're going to reflect on it some more. So I'll be reading. You can close your eyes if you want to, if that helps you think about what I'm saying. You don't need to. You can keep your eyes open. You can um, picture what I'm describing uh, with your eyes open or closed. Just make yourself comfortable. We read in Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. One generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendour of your majesty. They tell of the power of your awesome works. They celebrate your abundance, goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. This morning I want us to think about that verse one generation commends your works to another. One generation commends your works to another. Imagine a line of people, a line of about 200 people. How long would that be? Perhaps imagine this line inside the building starting up the front. How far would it stretch? You are towards the end of that line. That there are 200 people in front of you. And these 200 people are the generations of Christians since Christ himself, Christ's death, Christ's resurrection. Right at the front, Peter, Mary Magdalene, Paul, followed by Timothy and the rest of those second generation Christians. Right in front of you are the people who told you about Jesus, the people who led you to faith. Imagine the faces in this line, starting with Christians from the Middle East, the missionaries sent from Rome, the church planters sent to our country, the leaders from before you were born. Each person telling the next person, one generation to another commends your work.
Imagine what each of these generations has gone through throughout the ages. The adventures, the suffering, the breakthroughs, the hard work, all to bring the church to this place where we sit this morning, in this meeting, bringing the thanksgiving and the prayers of our generation to Christ. See yourself in this long line of Christians where one generation commends God's work to another. Draw strength from your unity with these witnesses. These are the servants making up the church of which you are one, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Give thanks for their faithful service to Christ. Now, imagine casting a glance backwards over your shoulder in this line of generations of Christians. Think about who is following in your footsteps. Who is coming up behind you? You might want to pray for someone you can see that they too may stand faithful or you might just want to commit to God to that you will declare him from this generation to the next. Let's spend a little bit of time in this image and, and pray about the things God might be nudging you to think about. Thank you, God, for those throughout time who have spoken and continue to speak of your wonderful works and who have built your church here and everywhere. Help us to continue to proclaim your great deeds to the generations to come. Amen. Lorraine, well, I'm handing over to you for the Bible reading and then off to Paul. This reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some of us are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptised into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not a part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. Some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. So God has put the body together such that extra honour and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it, and if one part is honoured, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Thanks, Lorraine. I'm not sure getting up preaching after this one, embrace imperfection. Is that a get out of jail free card or what? I'll start by saying thank you to everyone who passed on their condolences to myself. Um, 
with the passing my dad, who died last Sunday night, and um, and the funeral's on um, Tuesday at St Bernard's at eleven thirty, uh, which is um, Catholic. My parents are Catholic, and and so that's where the service is. And then we go to Faulkner uh, for the uh, committal, and I'll do that part of the service for the for that. So thank you. Appreciate all your thoughts and prayers. <clears throat> I want to start this morning with a short story about membership. At the beginning of this year, my nephew, uh, who is a Sydney Swan supporter, buoyed by the good results of last year and the additional players that the Swans picked up over the off-season last year, um, uh, decided that he would buy a membership to the Sydney Swans because he wanted to go to the grand final. Um, and he, uh, so he bought his Sydney Swans membership uh, and, and he went into the ballot and he actually got a ticket to go to the grand final and the less we say about that game, the better. Because as you know, Sydney Swans made the grand final. For my nephew, being a Sydney Swans member was a means to an end. The goal was to go to the grand final and gaining membership was a way of getting there. To the best of my knowledge, um, although he attended, he's attended many football Swans uh, games over his life, this was the first time that he actually went and bought a membership because it was a means to an end. And I say he, he bought the membership because Sydney Swans, like all the AFL clubs, that's how they raise one of their income streams. Um, and so all the clubs, you buy memberships, to, and that's part of the way they get income. They get income from TV rights and all, all sorts of other ways, but that's one way. And from a club's point of view, membership is a means to an end, isn't it? It's a financial viability means to their end. Well, what's this got to do with membership at West Preston Baptist Church? Well, you are all attenders of this church. You are, in effect, supporters of our church. You come and you participate and you financially support and you sing and you worship and you lead different ministries but there is something more at West Preston Baptist Church, and that is membership. Membership at our church also is a means to an end. And that is what I want to talk about today. What is the aim and the purpose of membership in the context of our church? Now, if you're a member already, I hope that you're in some ways re-energised by what you hear about being a member. If you're not a member then and you're a tender and a supporter, I hope to inspire you to think about becoming a member of our church. So I'm going to do three things. I'm going to talk and explain the first is I'm going to talk and explain about membership in a Baptist kind of context. We're, we're a Baptist church and, we'll talk, and I'll talk about that. The second thing I'll do is I'll explain membership in the West Preston context. And the last thing I'll do is I want to address some questions that people have raised about uh, reluctance or concern about membership. They're all valid. So here we go. Let's start with membership in a Baptist context. Many of you have come from different denominations, Catholics, Orthodox, there's Anglicans, we've got some of you are from Pentecostal backgrounds, and most of those denominations don't have membership. So coming here and for me to be talking about membership might seem like really weird and kind of strange and quite foreign. Me, coming from a Catholic background, 
membership was like, what the? <laughs> like, what is this thing? The reason Baptists and some other denominations like Churches of Christ, they also have membership, comes from their understanding of who are the people that make up the community of the church and how that church is led and organised. So for Baptists, it's all about who are the people that make up the community of the church and how we're organised and led. In the Baptist context, churches are communities of people who profess and claim that Jesus is Lord and Saviour. For Baptists, Jesus is Lord, which means he alone has authority not only over your life, but of the life of the community. As Saviour, Jesus is, Jesus is Saviour, he alone, his death on the cross brings salvation to us, our sins are forgiven and we look to an eternal life living in God's hands. Now you might be thinking, hang on Paul, but don't most Christian churches believe that Jesus is Lord and Saviour? And the answer is an emphatic yes. <laughs> the Christian churches do believe that. But there's... Um, Sorry, we do believe that. However, for Baptists, Jesus commanded that you show or demonstrate your belief in what I've just proclaimed by being physically baptised. Hence our name, we're Baptists. Now, again, you might say, hang on, but don't most other Christian churches also have baptism? And yes, they do. But for Baptists, and hence our name, we believe that baptism belongs as a faith statement from a believer's heart. So you need to be old enough, mature enough, to make your own statement and belief of faith, and then you would be baptised. Not all denominations do that. Some denominations baptise babies, for example. Baptists, we don't baptise babies. But there's some, so all Christian churches profess Jesus as Lord and Saviour, as Baptists, we do too. Most Christian churches have a form of baptism, but for Baptists, it's more an imperative that one would be baptised. But the more obvious thing that separates Baptists from other churches is how we're led and organised. In the Baptist church, the church is not led by a pope, or a patriarch, or a bishop, or a priest, or a synod, or a presbytery, or any combination thereof. In the Baptist way of doing church, we are led at the local church as a community together. We work out how we do church, what we mean by church, by how we do it together. The community is led by a local congregation. The local congregation leads each other. You can look around the room now and say, ooh, I'm meant to be led by that one. <laughs> yeah. 
Pip, April, cut it out. <laughs> and what underpins this model of doing church, that we lead each other, is a very important understanding. The fact that we profess Jesus as Lord and Saviour means we have a conviction in that we follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit that is given to each person who is a believer. And it's the Holy Spirit that unifies us and directs us and guides us into the leading of his will for us as a local, as a local congregation. That form of uh, this idea that we're led by a congregation is why we're sometimes also referred to as being congregationalists. Put simply, the Baptist model of doing church requires everyone to be a believer in the Lordship of Jesus Christ guided by his Holy Spirit. That's kind of like basic requirement 101 of being in a Baptist community. And the final thing, the final thing about Baptist thought that ties and binds the community together is Jesus' imperative to love one another. In John 13, he said, I'll give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus was addressing the community of his disciples and was saying, as a community, how you love one another demonstrates and shows my love, God's love. And it's a witness. People will see something different. In Baptist thought, how the local community loves each other, is committed to each other, sacrificially serve each other, is the witness to the wider community that they need to see in order to recognise Jesus' presence. So, to tie those things all together, membership in a Baptist context is, the, is a means to an end. It's the means by which we know who are the people that believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and are committed to following the leading of the Holy Spirit over that community and are prepared and committed to love and serve each other? That's the Baptist big picture of membership and why we need a membership in order to know who in our community that we are with are prepared to love and serve and follow the leading of the Spirit. Now let's talk about West Preston Baptist. Those three basic principles hold true equally and profoundly at West Preston. We require people to be believers in Jesus as Lord and Saviour and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We are ultimately led by each other. We are a congregational led community. Now, though, we do have appointed leaders. We have deacons and we have 
leaders over our various ministry areas, leaders over our worship area, leaders over community outreach. We have people leading over the children's program. I, as a pastor, have a responsibility to lead in the life of the church. Our deacons have a responsibility to lead in the church as well. But we lead only within the confines and the boundaries that the congregation, you guys, have placed on the roles. We're answerable and accountable to the congregation. And that's why we have our quarterly meetings where, where we bring unforeseen or, uh, or significant moments in the life of the church. We bring it to the, con to the congregation to discern together the will of God in whatever that issue is. And we report back to the congregation what's happening in the life of our church. And finally, at West Preston, we're committed to care and love each other. When someone commits to being a member of the West Preston Baptist Church, the congregation equally commits to loving and caring them. It's a two-way relationship. It's about giving and it's about receiving, being within a community that loves and cares. So membership at West Preston is the outworking of these principles. So, how is membership a means to an end here at West Preston? What is the end that I'm talking about? What is this purpose of membership? Membership is the means by which we know who is committed to love and serve each other in the life of this church. Membership is the means by which we know who is committed to discussing and discerning together what and where God is leading us by his spirit. Ultimately, the decisions of the direction and the life of this church are made by each other, together. With that said, I just want to address some concerns that people have about membership. The, um, the, the last reading we were reading about Corinthians talks about us being part of a body. When someone becomes a believer and follower of Jesus, they automatically become part of the broader body of the whole of the Church of Christ. They become part of God's kingdom. They become part of God's family. We become children of God. We become members of a universal church, a worldwide church. And it's a big body that extends across nations and countries and different denominations and traditions of the church all around the world. When we talk about becoming a member of West Preston Baptist Church, we're talking about something different. We're not minimising or reducing 
the idea of being part of the greater body of the church, nor are we excluding other believers from being part of our community. All believers in Jesus who want to be committed to just us as a congregation of people are welcome. <laughs> Come and join us. Be part of us. Another question that is sometimes raised is, can you be an attender and supporter at West Preston Baptist Church and not be a member? The answer is an emphatic yes. <laughs> you can come here and be, and be part of this congregation as a, an attender and a support. You, you don't need to be a member to attend. You might be, in your mind, fully committed to loving and serving and giving to this community, and that's great. However, you are choosing to limit and restrict how you can fully participate in the life of the church. There are roles in our church that it's a requirement for people to be a member. But that's because it's by being in the membership, remember, it's about knowing who, it's by being in the membership that we see and learn and know and grow and hear and listen and witness the Holy Spirit discerning in the congregation by choosing to come only and not be a member is to limit. There's a point where you can't be part of that process when as members we're meeting to discern God's will and church. So I think there is, someone asked the question, is there an expectation that people would become members? And I think the answer is yes. There is an expectation that people would become members at West Preston simply because it's the fullest way you can give of yourself and we can give of ourselves to you by being a member. And I'll end with this in terms of reasons. Another reason why people don't want to be a member is that they simply have an aversion to meetings. <laughs> meetings, they're allergic to them. Meetings are not their thing. It may be that they've had bad experience of meetings. We've all had bad experience of meetings. We dislike the politics that often go with meetings, whether they're at work or at home or at church. And maybe their experience of meetings, they're just plain old boring and a waste of time. Two things to say about members' meetings here at West Preston. We actually try to make them engaging and participatory as possible. And where we do have to discern something together, we do try to listen and hear from each of our other. We're a pretty informal lot. We don't run our meetings by Robert's rules. Because the way we want, want to run our meetings is because we see ourselves as relationally connected together and our meetings try to reflect that. Please don't ever reduce the thought of membership to being able to vote 
at a meeting. I've, I've often heard it said, oh, you need to be a me member in order to vote. That is the lowest common point of a meeting because it's what happens before that's what's important. Members' meetings are about us finding consensus together by the leading of God's Spirit so that we're tied with a unity about what we're going to vote on. That's all the voting really becomes. Membership meetings are where we come together to find consen consensus and agreement. Members' meetings, when we have them, are about us sharing in the life of the church and we want everyone to be part of that, part of that gathering. Membership at West Preston Baptist Church is a means to an end. It's how we can fully and without limitations make ourselves available to love and to serve each other. Membership is a means to an end. It is how we know we are fully committed to discerning the will of God as a community of believers. At our last quarterly meeting, Neil and Sue, Raphael, Melina, Emmanuel came into membership. I wasn't here, I was on holidays. But I was watching the video of the service later. And I was so moved by simply hearing people say why they wanted to be part of us. It's nice when people say they want to be part of you, us together. It was actually when I remember sitting there thinking, that's one of the most encouraging services I've never been to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, it was me not being there. <laughs> if you're an existing member, can I encourage you to go out of your way, to be re-energised by your commitment to love and serve one another. Actually go out of your way. Dig deeper to love and serve. Jesus will be revealed as we love one another. And if you um, aren't a member, but in your heart and your mind, you're committed to this community and you're a believer in Jesus as Lord and Saviour, please consider joining us. We need the Holy Spirit working through you as part of us. When we meet together as members, when we need together to discern God's will. If you would like to become a member, all you need to do is speak to me or Jonathan or Tony, or Regina, one of the other deacons, to start faith, to start the process. That's all you need to do. Let me pray. Loving God, when we meet as members together, we, um, we need your spirit, <laughs> first and foremost. And uh, so we thank you for the fact that you have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so thank you, Father, uh, for your gift of your Spirit that continues to unite us and bind us together. Lord, for um, 
I don't know. Sometimes I thought, I think of the wacky ways churches organise themselves together and in the Baptist world we're organised as a congregation and so we need to be together to discern your will. Lord, for the times when we gather together as members, bless us, guide us, lead us. Lord, um, empower us to do your will. And Lord, um, thank you, picking up a bit what Elizabeth said earlier, thank you for the members of the, the generations of the members that have gone before us in this church that have been building your presence here in West Preston as the a local community of believers. We thank you for the generations that have gone before us that have led us to where we are today. We thank you for the people that were there, that gave and loved and served them. And we ask that you would empower us to love and serve each other today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At the start of the week, Paul, who's usually preaching, will email the person on music and the person who's leading to say, you know, this is what we're doing and see whether he's got any thoughts about songs. Uh, and this this week Paul emailed Rod and I and said, I just thought this song might be good. And um, I had already looked at the, uh, the theme and, and started some thinking before I'd seen that email. I thought, oh, I think we'd better sing this song. So when the pastor and the worship leader both think of the same song it's a pretty good sign that we should be singing that song to close <laughs> and uh, I don't know whether there's a song that you think would sum up today's service very well too Tony's gonna guess build your kingdom here build your kingdom here that's our prayer that's our prayer for this place and for our place in this long light generations of believers before us so let's stand and sing build your kingdom here before we finish
streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray we are your church lord and we do want to keep building your kingdom here Amen.